All right, so thanks for joining me. Today, I want to share with you some tidbits on uh, just some stocks, just Fed and uh, Russia news as well, um, you know, and just give you my own personal take and insight. A little bit of a different video than normal, but I'll just thought I'd just chat and uh, give you some personal take. So anyways, we're going to go over a couple of different stocks as well, and I'll just give you some takes here. Um, keep in mind, it's not a recommendation to buy, sell, or trade anything, just my own opinion. Uh, as we get into this, and uh, I want to share with you some thoughts, uh, feel free to join the Traders Fly newsletter. That's where you uh, can get some uh, good insight for some of the things that I work on and do as well, some live classes and some actual stuff related to trading. As some of the things that we cover in the news related things, um, like right now, uh, a lot a lot of this is more for longer investment portfolio. But if you want to get a little bit more interactive for one-on-one, uh, -on -one, uh, you know, quicker trading, uh, then check out also the Discord channel right here. Uh, that's where you can get some more uh, tidbits and insight. Okay, so let's chat a little bit more about here what's going on. Uh, the Fed is set to... Um, increase or raise interest rates. You know, a lot of people were talking about doing a uh, half a percent uh, or half a point, and now they're talking about 25. They were saying maybe five rate hikes, seven rate hikes, 10 rate hikes uh, this year. Uh, but I think that's just overblown. Just in general, when you think about it, um, logically, hey, maybe they want to pick up some speed, but they're not going to go too fast. Uh, they're always very cautious uh, when doing those things. So uh, they'll, they'll raise it a little bit, and then they'll back off and see how that reacts. Then they'll raise it again if they're not, if it's not doing enough damage, then they'll pick up some speed. And that's usually the way that it works. Uh, Bank of Canada, by the way, I'm not sure if you keep in track, but uh, Bank of Canada already is ahead of the curve uh, just because their meetings were a bit earlier and so on. Uh, but here on March 2nd, uh, they did hike the interest rate uh, 2.5. So uh, when you look at kind of just overall bank raised its benchmark rate from 0.5% on Wednesday, a move that is affected the first series of small rate hikes. So again, they're still doing small. It's not like, hey, really, really panic. Like if they were really panicked, they would, they'd be raising it fast like they they you'll see it happen um because then it's really aggressive right now they're not really panicking yet uh they're starting to see it but you know they don't want to overdo it because that that'll really put a halt on a lot of things uh in the economy again thinking about long-term investing right not as active trading right now uh so we're talking about longer term uh, otherwise, uh, what they're trying to do is combat that inflation because right now when you look at this inflation uh, gas price is higher and uh, you know it's just it's skyrocketing, not only from uh, the um, uh, the Ukraine uh, Russia thing, but also just in inflation in general. So it it's picking up some speed, much more so than people would expect. And you know, for people that make quite a bit of money, let's just say uh, two hundred thousand dollars a year or more, uh, the gas prices, let's just say, it's going to maybe throw a little bit of a wrench, an extra $500 or $1,000 a year for you, and it may not be a big deal. For other people, the majority of the other working class or people that drive or commute a lot, it will affect them quite a bit, and that means they'll have less money to spend um, on other things, products, and uh, that means that businesses and companies won't be able to, let's say, make a bigger profit because now those people are spending more money at the pump and less disposable income, and that's really just the way economics works in general. Um, back when I studied economics, you can just see everything's tied together, and when you really look at trading just trading overall active trading it's all about energy the flow of energy and when you really get it you can see all of these little pieces it's not just one reason right but people try and tie one reason or one thing to uh the market like why is the market selling off well because of gas prices not really there's like millions of reasons some people are buying shares because hey they're buying it as a gift for their son or daughter other people are buying it for different reasons so Anyway, when we start looking at this and you start looking at gas prices, anyway, I just want to share with you, like here, here's U.S. prices, obviously in, in Greece and Europe, they've been higher much more so uh, already. So it's just that things are hitting people even more so. Uh, here you're seeing, you know, about six bucks a gallon here, um, gas taxes as well. And uh, here is 649, 659. So uh, looking at some states, you know, California is around 564, Nevada 480, uh, Hawaii 480. So you can see here some of the uh, some some of those gas prices, and over here bottom ten states you're still looking at uh, you know Iowa about three ninety, uh, Minnesota three three ninety, Kansas three eighty. So you can see there's there's kind of a, a spread there. So uh, and people that are you know driving the hybrid cars are probably spawning and stuff. Uh, some of this is attributed of course to the Russia thing, but a lot of the companies are also um, kind of struggling as well to exit out of Russia. So that will affect their bottom line. So if you look at McDonald's, Starbucks, Coke, Pepsi. Uh, they are trying to exit uh, some of the Russian stakes. So just checking things out on McDonald's, you can see it will probably affect that, you know, uh, their, their earnings and it will affect the company uh, quite a bit. 
I don't know whether it's going to be 2%, 5%, 12%, right? Because it's it's not all linear. Like, hey, this is how much we make in Russia. So this is how much it's going to affect us. Because some of those sales may go in other areas. They might cut costs in, in other zones and divisions. So uh, that could play out a little bit differently. But here, McDonald's, I don't have any investments. But when you start looking at this, this is starting to come into a nice solid level right here around 220. And this is where a lot of people are panicking. So it's a good time and opportunity to possibly start buying in and getting into some of the dips here uh, soon in the future. Because this is now getting into 20. 2021 uh, about March pricing, uh, whereas that stock was around to, uh, 260 to $70 a share. Again, looking at from a long investing uh, perspective, we're not talking about options. If you want to talk about options, check out my other channel on uh, Traders Fly. And you can go there on YouTube or the website. If you look at Starbucks, which I do have some long investment stuff on, uh, also not doing so well. Um, and I'm selling call spreads against this and other things, uh, just being a little extra cautious on it. It is selling off and it's selling off quite quickly. And this is not looking good, right? It's not healthy uh, for the company and it's it's pulling out. So you can see this nosedive here that's affecting it. And I think this could maybe even pull back down to about this $70 price point. And um, that could be a, a, a problem for the time being. Now, in the long run, if you're a long-term investor, let's say a five-year time horizon, a 10-year, this is probably a blip on the screen. Um, when other people are panicked, this is probably when you want to do some buying, uh, but you don't want to buy all in one day. Spread out. If you got a thousand bucks, spread out, you know, a uh, hundred bucks uh, this, this month, a hundred bucks next month, and that should help uh, average things in there. So you want to look at the total spread. Uh, so if you start looking at some of these uh, things, um, you know, they're trying to exit some some of the uh, the Russian stakes as well. Basically, Russia is getting uh, annihilated from left and right from other areas. And I, I've been there. I grew up there. So uh, definitely a mindset of people struggle there. And, uh, you know, I, th I think what's going to happen here is they got another hard 20, 30 years ahead of them just to catch up to where they were uh, simply by these actions. Now, China is probably going to try to help them out a bit. We'll see. Um, but I think now you're going to get into some conflict with China and other countries if that's going to happen. So we'll see how that all pans out. Uh, you also see a lot of the banks struggling just because banks are so interconnected around the world uh, between Citigroup, Bank of America, and you're wondering like, why are the banks selling off? So here, if we just take a look at Bank of America, uh, you know, they're selling off quite heavily because they're, they're all entangled together right they're all they're all tied together uh goldman sachs you can see they're just you know uh flushing down and selling off uh city group uh sorry uh city or is it city there it is uh city group also just kind of um uh, selling off as well um uh, jp morgan you can see just a lot of the banks are just struggling uh, here. Now, I got into JP Morgan back here on this dip and I took some profits and then kind of exited around 150 once it started to break. Uh, but when you start looking at this, now we're getting into this 130 price level. And if this thing can't hold, we probably are going to get in back here and maybe even fill that gap. So that could be a, a bit of more of a some trouble here on uh, just a lot of these banks and, and stuff. So um, I think you got some more pain ahead in some areas, but uh, some of the other bright spots, you know, you look at Caterpillar is pushing into higher prices. So there are some uh, some nice uh, signs there. And even on some of the tech stocks, uh, like maybe a Facebook, you might start seeing some of these start basing out. And, you know, you don't really know where the bottom is going to be, but you know that in the long run, these things should work out fine. And that's really what you're looking for in these kinds of companies is that, where am I getting to, um, <clears throat> excuse me, where the bottom is, and you just don't know, but what you can do is start nibbling, hey, a little bit this month, a little bit next month, and you're starting to say, hey, already we're down quite a bit in some of these tech companies, and uh, this one's already down 51%, if you look at stuff like, like even Zoom, uh, you know, they're down big time. And uh, now we're even breaking the $100 level, down 83%. Now McDonald's, when you start seeing some of this stuff, you know, we're down right now about 16%. Uh, even Microsoft, uh, you know, uh, we're selling off quite a bit. So there are some opportunities where I say, hey, you could take a nibble down 20% here and um, see, you know, could it pop? But I think do so cautiously because uh, this thing could still have some legs to the downside. And you might even have a really nasty uh, bearish year or two. Um, hopefully we're not going to get back into, I think it was the 70s where, we just had sideways market for like 10 years or something like that. Uh, I think it was 60s, 62, 60 to 72 or some, something like that. I have to double check. 
But I know in the 60s there, uh, somewhere around that time frame, uh, they had a sideways market for like a decade. And uh, that could also happen as well. So just keep in mind, you know, a lot of times the market has been going up for us in our time frame and generation, but this could also start pulling back quite a bit. And you could get a sideways market for many years to come, especially if there's a lot of um, halt or idle things going on between trade and economics and there's just back and forth. So anyways, this is just what's happening here. Um, I think more than likely with the Fed, we you know, market's already pricing it in that they're going to hike, uh, you know, a quarter point here. And I think what's going to really drive the market a little more insane is if we start, if if they hike a little more aggressive and also some of the tone and other things that'll go into that, um, it, what's to come in the next the next year over the next, you know, six, eight, 10 months, uh, how aggressive do they feel? And that's really what the market's really reading for. They're already expecting that it'll probably hike, uh, you know, at least a quarter um, probably not a full half, uh, but we'll see what happens. Right. And at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter what they do. What matters is the market reaction behind it. So if you see this market reacting like, Hey, we're going to buy onto it, that could be a good sign. Whereas if you see it selling off, that could also be a problem. So anyway, as we check out here, the SPY, and what's uh, going on, we are under the 420 level. That's just not good, not healthy uh, right now. And if we keep selling off, that could s have some pressure here around that 410 level. But you could see when we got into the 410, that was kind of a panic sell. And then we started to pop uh, back higher uh, fairly quickly. So I think we're getting closer to a bottom, uh, at least for the longer term you know, kind of the, the intermediate term, uh, whether it's for the long run, you know, if you're investing in stocks, the long run, typically they, they do go higher. Um, but right now you're kind of looking at, okay, we've been selling off for quite a while. This, um, you know, looking at it, we've got 2.3 months in about 13% down. So you probably should find a base soon. Unfortunately, technically 420, we are under it right now. And that means you could see some more selling pressure for now. And, um, you know, you could get into other lower levels, but where that lower level is, you don't know. So short term, let's see where we're going to bounce. Um, and then we'll see if we can hold that. But right now, this trend line continues to uh, press in this downward level. We've got resistance that continues to uh, press against this point and these levels. And if we continue going that way, that's going to be trouble. As long as we can break above something like that and then start making you know, uh, higher lows, that's really what we're looking for. Other than that, you know, keep an eye on some of these things. Um, but if you're kind of an active trader, a lot of this is just noise and news. And, uh, you know, you're just putting on some trades anyway, like for me, as I, as I look to some of these trades, uh, like here's some of the stuff I looked at, it doesn't even matter, FLR, uh, CLF. So I'm looking at things that are extended and uh, I'm looking to trade them kind of either to the downside um, and uh, see if we can get a downward move in the next, you know, week or two. And that could usually also mean because the market's popping higher, these will maybe sell off. So anyway, um, it just depends on uh, just how you like to trade. And for the long run, the news is beneficial, maybe uh, for the short run. It's just a little bit of stuff that's going on here that could play into the markets and so on. So just uh, trade accordingly, understand your horizon, meaning your investment duration. Is it three months, six months, uh, 20 days, 10 days? How long are you trading for? How long are you investing for? And then make your decisions accordingly. Anyways, thanks for joining me. Hope you enjoyed this video. And if you want to see more videos like this one, uh, feel free to subscribe to the channel or check out the tradersfly.com website. And I'll see you on the next one.